This video is going to be divisive, controversial, and you're going to find that you're going to fall into maybe one of three camps here as we go through this video in which we talk about and answer the why question regarding why did I pay off my $400,000 mortgage at the age of 36. Let's get into it. All right, so first off, let's talk about the divisive and controversial piece. So just briefly, I, I came to a fork in the road, right? Two decisions to make. One fork was to pay off my mortgage, which I did. And we'll get into the math behind that in a moment. The second fork in the road was to utilize those dollars and instead of pay off my mortgage, do something different with it, maybe to generate more revenue uh, or make that pile of money a much bigger pile of money. And, and again, we'll take a look at the math behind that. Now, either right now or certainly at the end of this video, you'll fall into one of those three buckets I was talking about. And so the first bucket is where you have intelligent feedback in the comments you agree with me, right? Maybe you paid off your mortgage, you're financially free, maybe you're looking to do it, maybe it's just a, a thought in your mind right now. The second bucket, okay, is folks that don't agree with me, but there's still intelligent feedback. There's uh, a lot of great conversation that I've seen down there in the comments and, uh, you know, some, some math. And um, I wrestled with a lot of the things that you guys are pointing out down there in the comments. I, and, and we'll get into that. And then the third bucket, the, th the third bucket, God help all of you. Um, these people, you know, I, I'm, I'm fairly new to the whole YouTube thing, but God help you, man. You guys need to, you know, find another hobby or something with some of those comments, you know, just <laughs> bleep you, you bleep an idiot and all this. Anyways, God bless you. Uh, I wish you the best. And, uh, I, you do make me laugh out there when I see all these outrageous comments, but we'll stick to the first two buckets. So let's get into the two forks in the road. Let's get into some of the math behind the two forks in the road, and then I'm going to explain, you know, how I came to the decision that I came to. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so let's take a look at option one. Option one is where we actually pay off our mortgage, like I did. That was my choice. Let's then take a look at option two, and we'll get into that where you use these dollars that you pay off a mortgage and do something different with it, maybe make more money or perceivably a smarter financial decision and then uh, we'll finally look at an in-depth discussion about how I came to the decision I came to which was to pay off my mortgage so top left here okay mortgage details you can see four hundred thousand dollar mortgage twenty percent down payment loan amount three hundred twenty thousand dollars three point eight eight percent interest rate across thirty years right thirty year fixed mortgage the property taxes, 7800 um, bucks. I think that's high. Uh, that's what I pay, but I think that's high. But uh, where I live, I have an acre, or acre and a half of land, and the, the uh, property taxes are, again, in my opinion, high. I don't know if you think that's high or low. I think it's high. PMI, 0%, because I put down 20% on the loan, and then my homeowner's insurance is about $2,000 there. So scrolling down is where you get into some of the the interesting numbers here okay so this right here is important okay monthly payment two thousand three hundred twenty one dollars that's what I was paying to keep my house for the next 30 years okay uh, that heavily weighed on my decision to pay off my mortgage and we'll get into that but remember this is just this is uh, principal interest taxes and homeowners insurance right this doesn't include my cell phone, my ho my car insurance. Uh, you want to go out to dinner or something, right? Uh, home heating oil, you know, whatever. So my monthly layout just to keep my house for the next 30 years, 2300 uh, bucks. My actual outlay on a monthly basis was more than that, okay? It was, you know, into the $3,000 range, okay? Uh, with everything else we have going on. So that's that's a pretty heavy weight hanging over your head, right? Uh, down payment amount, uh, amount there, you can see $80,000, right? PMI not required. You can see the 20% down payment. Uh, you can also see this is an interesting number, right? Um, obviously, you know, the dates here kind of shifted around a little bit because I paid this off in under five years, you know, uh, about five years ago, five plus years ago now. And uh, so this date was really, it says 2049, 
you know, it was probably something like 2044 or something, right? So I was going to be, I don't know, in my early to, I guess, mid, what, mid 60s, right? Still trying to come up with, you know, at least 2300 bucks a month to pay off my house. So I'm going to be, you know, 66, retired and still paying a mortgage. Um, and then you can see all the other numbers here, right? Annual payment amount, you know, I need to come up with 27, 28 grand a year just to pay the minimum and drag this thing out 30 years. Um, and then this is an interesting number, right? My $400,000 house cost me $835,000. So, you know, I more than doubled uh, the cost of my initial uh, home loan there at the end of the term of the 360 mortgage payments, right? I almost have a million dollar home if you think of it. I bought a $400,000 house and I'm basically living in a million dollar home. Let's get on to option number two and take a look at that math. All right guys, so option two is where instead of you paying off your mortgage, and this is where people either uh, disagreed with me paying off my mortgage, remember that bucket, uh, which was the second bucket of people or thought processes out there, or the third bucket where people were just belligerent and calling me a bleeping idiot, right? <laughs> and uh, maybe you'll see this math and, I, you know, maybe you'll call me an idiot too, but this is something I wrestled with uh, long and hard, option one and option two. So option two is where we take the $320,000, right? I still buy the house. I put the $80,000 down but I pay my bill like a good little mortgage paying person for the next 30 years. Um, and I take the uh, balance of what I would pay my mortgage off with $320,000, right? That $320,000 check I wrote uh, to the bank. And uh, instead, what I do is I invest it, right? So what I did here is I said, well, what would that look like for 30 years, right? I don't pay off the mortgage, but I invest this money, say, in... And in, in this example, it's it's somewhat uh, basic, but I take the three hundred twenty thousand dollars, I invest it. You know, we say for thirty years, into say an S and P five hundred ETF, exchange traded fund, or something, right? Making the nine point eight percent or ten percent return year over year, like the stock market average, right? And I also said that I wouldn't contribute a, another single dollar. I just invest this one time instead of paying off my mortgage and just let it grow for the next 30 years. Now, this is where people start using expletives and calling me an idiot. And um, in a way, I don't agree, disagree with you uh, because I wrestled with this in my head. You know, in a nutshell, after 30 years, you're going to have, if I can highlight that, $5.5 million, right? My $320,000 investment today equals 5.5 million after the end of 30 years. That's significant, that's huge. You can see no additional contributions and you can see um, the amount of you know interest plus the principal, 320, you know, the, the, the all-in number is $5.5 million, okay? Um, down here you can see kind of the amortization or um, schedule down here. Just the time value of money is what you're looking at here, right? Starting principal, $320,000. And um, you can see, you know, just year one alone, you're up to $352,000 if all goes well. Um, if we scroll down to, you know, the end of the 30 years, you know, this is your initial principal still, but here's, um, you know, the interest or the money you're making uh, on this. And then here's that $5.5 .5 million number, right? So this is why people call me an absolute idiot in some cases. Because, you know, mathematically, you look at option one, you know, my $400,000 house is an $800,000, $900,000 house. Or you look at this option two, my $320,000 after 30 years turns into five and a half million. So let's get into why I made the decision I made. All right, guys. So we just took a look at the two options we had available here and obviously I chose the option to pay off my mortgage so why did I do it well there's a bunch of reasons um, probably first and foremost it boiled down to financial freedom what is that like you know uh, do I want to get a taste of that financial freedom thing when I'm 66 67 years old I, I didn't want to do it um, 
we looked at the other option, the investment vehicle option, and you might say, well, you know, you kind of left, you know, five and a half million dollars on the table there, smart guy, right? And you're right. Um, one of the things I say in these videos uh, is that the essentially success is the ability to delay instant gratification. And in this case, I'll be honest, I kind of failed. Um, but I, I was looking at things in a bunch of different ways, making a million different decisions. And finally, I made my final decision uh, to pay off the mortgage. Um, I did all the math, just like you guys just looked at and walked through with me. And um, the more important thing to me and my family right now, and in the medium term, was to, and quite frankly, the long term, was to be financially free. What's that like? And um, the thing I balanced that against was in 30 years sitting here with a pile of five and a half million dollars if all the assumptions I built into those calculations come true. And they probably will. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I won't have those dollars. So financial freedom was basically the, the, the most important driver there. I can go and do basically what I want to do now. Um, the other thing is that, you know, I'm not at zero. I didn't go right to zero, basically. Um, I had a retirement account that I've been building up for years. And uh, I, I also, the way I look at it is every paycheck since I paid off my mortgage there over a year ago is I, I take every single penny minus my utility or, you know, expenses, if you will, cell phone and going out to eat here and there and stuff, right? And I take every single other dime and I put it into my Vanguard brokerage account and I invest it uh, via other means. And so I'm constantly growing that and I'm, I'm the, the amount of saving that I've been able to accelerate has been phenomenal because I've always had, a, you know, at the end of a month, you know, upwards of a $3,000 plus, you know, all in bill with all my expenses. And now I don't. Um, it's I have a fraction of that. So. Long story short, some of you are going to agree with me, some of you are not going to agree with me, and then there's going to be the third bucket out there that's, you know, you come out from your, your bridge and you're going, this guy is an absolute idiot, bleep, 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 you know. God bless y'all. Um, hopefully this video helped you, um, it, and if you're trying to make some type of decision similar to this out there, hopefully it helps you. Leave some comments down below. I like talking with you guys, and uh, if you have any questions or want to see some other videos, let me know, but... Appreciate you hearing me out and uh, till the next video. Thanks.